All right, guys, so here we have R134A entering a horizontal pipe operating at steady state. We have the temperature, pressure, and velocity at the inlet. And then at the exit, we're told that we have the temperature as well as the pressure. We have the diameter of the pipe, and we're going to be looking for the mass flow rate of the refrigerant, as well as the velocity at the exit. And then last but not least, the heat transfer between the pipe and the surroundings. So here we have our schematic. We have R134A entering as well as exiting. We have our diameter of the pipe as well as our givens on both sides. And then we have our, we're looking for our uh, mass flow rate, our heat transfer, as well as our velocity at exit number two. So first to find that mass flow rate, remember that mass flow rate one, oops, m dot one equals m dot two because of the mass uh, conservation of mass. So we could just have that equal to m dot, right? And the mass flow rate is actually equal to, we're going to use this relation here of uh, area times velocity divided by specific volume uh, gives us our mass flow rate. And we're going to, because we already have the velocity at one, we might as well use uh, all these parameters at inlet or uh, point number one of the schematic. So now let's just go down one line. So we'll have the, the mass flow rate is equal to, well, what's our area? Area of a circular diam uh, circular pipe is just going to be pi d squared, which is 0 0.04 meters. Pi d squared over 4, that's our area. And then what's our velocity? We have 40 meters per second. So we'll put that in here, 40 meters per second. And we're going to divide that by the specific volume. So now what's the specific volume? Well, we have a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius as well as 300 kilopascals. So let's see where we are in the property table. So if we turn to table A10 and we look at our givens, so we had a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius down here as well as a pressure of, uh, or that's our saturation pressure is, is 10.164. Remember that we were given a pressure of, let's put it down here, is 3 bar is our given temperature, or uh, pressure, sorry. So uh, we want to figure out what phase we're working with. Is it a su uh, superheated or is it a compressed liquid or a two-phase? So I'll do, what I'll do is I'll draw a PV diagram because we're looking for our specific volume over here, units being in uh, cubic meters per kilogram. And then over here we'll have our pressure and we'll just keep this in bar. First we'll draw our pressure dome. So it's going to look something like this. Let's do something like that. And... Typically, when you draw a PV diagram, you'll draw your temperature curve uh, in this fashion here. Should be a little bit more straight than that, but I guess you get the idea. And we're going to say that this is a constant of, this whole line is 40 degrees Celsius. Anywhere on that along this line here is 40 degrees Celsius. Now, the saturation pressure for 40 degrees Celsius would be right over here, and that would be 10 point, 10.164, and of course, this is in bar, as indicated right over here on the property table. Now, we were given uh, 3 bar, which is, if you just look at the y-axis or the pressure axis, that'd be probably somewhere around maybe uh, right here. We're not going to really call this drawn to scale, but let's call that 3 bar, which if you were to create a horizontal line going over to the right, you'd be probably somewhere right about here. So clearly you're in the superheated region because you're to the right of the vapor dome. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to actually have to switch out of this table here and go to 40 degrees Celsius on the superheated property table for R134A. All right, so here we are at table A12, which is the superheated table. And notice that we don't have a pressure of three bar on this table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a table to interpolate. So we'll have a pressure of or a pressure column, and then we'll have a, a specific volume column as well. So the closest thing we have is we have 2.8, and then we have 3.2 bar, and then we're looking for, once again, 3 bar, right? 3.0 bar. Sorry about that. Um, so what are, what are our corresponding uh, specific volumes at 40 degrees Celsius? So at 2.8 bar, we have 0 0.08 six six so zero point zero eight six six cubic meters per kilogram and then likewise at three point two bar we have zero point zero seven five one eight so if we just use some linear interpolation we should find that at three bar and four degrees celsius we have zero point zero eight zero eight nine cubic meters per kilogram 
So now let's go back to uh, the first page where we have our formula here to find our mass flow rate. And we can fill in on the bottom here in the denominator. We have 0 0.08089. And that's, once again, cubic meters per kilogram. That's the unit for your specific volume. And now let's just see if our units cancel out. So in the numerator, we have meters squared times meters. So we can cancel that out with the meters cubed on the bottom. And then we're left with a kilogram and in the denominator of a denominator. And we have a second in the denominator in the numerator. So basically what this yields you with is kilograms per second. And last but not least, if we just plug this into our calculator, we'll have that our mass flow rate equals 0 0.621 kilograms per second. So here's your answer to part A. And now for part B, we're going to apply a similar principle. So we'll have that the mass flow rate, again, remember mass flow rate one equals two. So therefore we can have the M dot equals A2 V2 over specific volume two, right? Um, now we have our mass flow rate, so we're just looking for our velocity. So let's just rearrange this. And when we do, we'll have that our velocity 2 equals our mass flow rate times our specific volume at point 2, or the exit, divided by the area of uh, the pipe at exit 2, which is going to be equal to the area at 1, right? Um, so let's start filling in what we have here. So we have, uh, we'll set this equal to our mass flow rate of 0 0.621, and that's in kilograms per second. And then we have our specific volume, where we have to get our specific volume, similarly to how we did in part A. Um, so we have 50 degrees Celsius and 240 kilopascals. So we're going to turn to table A10. And notice you don't have 50 degrees Celsius, but you do have 48 and 52. And the pressures between those two are 12.5 and 13.8. Um, so you're going to be somewhere in between those for your saturation pressure, which is still going to be much higher than what's given to us as, once again, uh, 240 kilopascals or 2.4 bar. So 2.4 bar would probably be somewhere around here, which would also be superheated. So once again, we're in the superheated table. Uh, and so let's go ahead and turn to that. Table A12, we're looking at 2.4 bar and 50 degrees Celsius. So we're looking right over here. So 50 degrees Celsius and then 2.4 bar. And we have a specific volume of 0 0.10562. So now we just plug that back in here. So we have 0 0.10562. And that's, once again, uh, cubic meters per kilogram. And now we just divide by the area. Once again, was just pi d squared over 4. And now before we plug this into our calculator, let's just verify that we're going to have our units in meters per second. So we have a kilogram here. We'll cancel out this kilogram here, numerator and, and denominator. And then in the top, we have a meter cubed in the numerator. And in the bottom, we have a meter squared also in a numerator. So we can go ahead and cancel out this meter squared here. Uh, and then in the, in the numerator here, uh, we can just cancel out that cubic function and we'll just be left with meters. And as you can see, now you have a meter in a numerator and second in a denominator and you're left with meters per second. So now if you plug this in your calculator, you should have that the, uh, vol or the velocity here equals 52 point two meters per second so here is your answer for the velocity and last but not least we're going to be looking for our heat transfer between the pipe and the surroundings um, so to do that i'm just going to use the um, law of first law of thermodynamics which is just the energy conservation so we'll have zero equals q minus w which is just heat transfer minus power plus m dot mass flow rate times basically uh, your inlet minus exit. So we'll have H1 minus H2 for your enthalpies. Uh, and then we're going to add to that our kinetic energy, which is going to be V1 squared squared minus V2 squared, just your velocities here. Divide that by two. And try to keep this neat here, plus your uh, potential energy, which is just going to be gravity times uh use some brackets here, Z1 minus Z2. All right, and we'll close the bracket here. And well, we notice that we have a horizontal pipe, so Z1 equals Z2. So we have no change in potential energy. And we can simplify this expression here. Uh, by the way, you also have no power here. We have no shaft, no uh, 
nothing really emitting or consuming power, so we can cancel out our power, and then we can simplify this expression, and we'll have that the heat transfer is equal to the mass flow rate times the change in enthalpy. Notice that I swapped them around because we have a change in sign here, as well as the velocities, the difference in velocity squared divided by two, or your kinetic energy. So now let's just go ahead and plug in what we have here. So we'll set this equal to our mass flow rate of 0 0.621, and that's kilograms per second. And we're going to multiply this all by our uh, H2 minus H1. So what's H2? Well, we have 50 degrees Celsius and 240 kilopascals. Turn back over here to table A12, and if we go to 50 degrees Celsius and then 2.4 bar, we have our enthalpy in the third column here of 294.47 kilojoules per kilogram. So 294.47, and we're going to subtract from that H1. So now what's H1? We'll go to the table for that. Again, table A12, and we're going to have to interpolate between 2.8 and 3.2, so I'll actually just add a column to this little table here that I made and we'll call this H. And so we're working with somewhere between 284.42 and then 283.67. And if you interpolate, you should find that your enthalpy, your specific enthalpy is 284.05 kilojoules per kilogram. So once again, 284.05 and now we can add our unit of kilojoules per kilogram. So now we'll just add our kinetic energy, so we'll do plus, and then V2, which we already calculated, is 52.2 squared, it's actually uh, meters per second squared, minus V1 squared, which is um, given to us as, what, 40 meters per second? So 40 squared, and that's, uh, if we just squared the unit here, it'd be meters squared per second squared and this unit can apply really to to both of the terms there and we're going to divide that by two and there is our kinetic energy and now before i close this bracket here um i just want to make note of the fact that here we have a kilo prefix so we have kilo joules not just joules and then here we don't have a kilo prefix um, so we're going to have to either convert the kilos into just joules, or we're going to have to convert the meters squared per second squared into, uh, you know, adding a kilo prefix there. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and do that. So I'm going to add a conversion factor here of 1 divided by 1,000, and this should give us our kilo prefix and take care of our units. So now if we just multiply this out, we'll have that our heat transfer, Q dot, equals 6.82 kilowatts.